Hey you guys, it's me Rhonda. Welcome back to my channel. I am, I'm gonna hop on here and do an improv video. I have so much that I wanna share. I don't even know where to start. So let me get settled and then we'll just, we'll just wing it. Okay, I'm just gonna get set up over here in my little area. Y'all, I literally do not have a game plan. So let's see how the light's gonna be here. It might not be, oh my gosh. I don't think that's gonna work. Let's see. Okay, you guys, I think I'm settled down now. <laughs> how are you? Welcome, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. I am so happy to have you here. Um, hey, y'all. <laughs> hey, back to my subscribers. Y'all, it's been a hot minute, um, but I, I, I wanted to sit down and have an intentional, intentional study, and um, I've gathered my books for three days. I've been wanting to do this video, and it has just not happened. It has not happened obviously. But as I sit here this morning, it is becoming heavier and heavier on my heart that I really just wanted to get on here and share some things with you, I guess. And maybe that will help to inspire the original reason I was wanting to do the video is to share stuff that I've been reading. Um, but anyway, the last video that I shared was, I think it was last Saturday when we were going to go have a dinner and I was just really struggling on the inside about praying out loud and praying in front of people. And I kind of shared that with you. And if you've been following, following me, you know the, the kind of struggle that I have and, and how I'm trying to work through and break through and how God is really leading me down the paths that are when I asked to be used, he's saying, okay, well, let's do this. And I'm like, nah. But anyway, I'm really trying to be obedient. And I'm telling you, every time you step into that obedience, things shift. So this past week has really been a week of shifting for me. It's actually been longer than a week, but I've just been more, I've had a little bit more time to sit and reflect on the shifts that have been going on. And um, so that's kind of what I just wanted to share. And I miss not being on here talking to you guys and sharing what I study. I miss those drop in the hat moments that I can just jump on here when I'm in my quiet time looking like I just got out of bed because I'm probably still in bed <laughs> doing my quiet time. I miss those little moments. And so while I, I try to compile them in my memory bank, as I go further away from them, they don't seem near as um, in the moment or inspired as they were in the moment when I felt that urge to, um, you know, pop on and do a, a short video or something. So that was one of the things that I've been struggling with is um, just not really feeling inspired. And the reason that I started this channel, number one, was to just kind of share my journey as I go and as I grow and how I've worked from, you know, things in my past, how I am where I am, why I believe what I believe, how I came to believe in what I believe, and just how God has just worked through my life over these past few years and changed me and grew me and has given me a platform, so to speak, that I never thought I would ever be on. But at the same time, I didn't want this to turn into something where, okay, I'm going to give a video out every Tuesday and every Friday and then put the pressure for me to perform because I never want it to be about me performing or um, trying to get on here to make content or create content. I want the content to come from the the moving of the Holy Spirit for me to be nudge and say, this would be something that would be good for you to share because I have so-and-so already out there who's going to be watching your video and it's it's for them. You know what I mean? I mean, I've never wanted it to be some mass platform. I want it to be for the one person or two people that God knows 
needs, whatever it is that I'm sharing, and they may not ever hear it in any other way or any other instance, except for me getting on here and just dropping a little hot potato or something. And so when that kind of went away, I, I think what happened was I was trying to overthink it. I've shared, oh, I, I've got a little planner and I'm gonna write down all the things that I wanna talk about. It started becoming more about me and less about why I made the channel in the first place, if that even makes sense. So with that being said, the, I think the routes that I have been taking and the things that have come up in my studies have mainly been for me. And I don't mean that to be said in a selfish way um, because when I have those little, oh, I wanna share this and then it doesn't happen, it was probably for me <laughs> and me alone trying to um, like put it upon, oh, well, this would be a good content. And so you know what I'm saying? It just started, everything that I was reading all of a sudden was becoming, oh, I can make a video about that. And that's not what I want to, this channel to become by any means. I want that when I put a video out there, even if it's a week or two weeks far between, um, I want it to be content that is worthy of your time. I don't want to just throw out a video to say, hey, this is what I'm doing now. Or I want it to be some kind of a um, encouragement or motivation or inspiration for you to pick up the word yourself because you just heard something that may have been a thought simmering or may have been something that you were wondering about and you were thinking, well, I wouldn't even know how to to read that or how to understand that. And so the past couple of weeks, months, um, I have really, really been feeling the conviction of covetousness. And I don't know if I've shared a lot about that before, but um, I am telling you, social media is the devil. <laughs> I know that sounds so cliche, but it really is. It will take you in an instant off your guard and onto a completely different, when I get on my, oh, oh I'm, oh my gosh, I'm recording on my phone. <laughs> well, when I get on my phone and um, I go to go to my Bible app or to one of the commentaries or something, if there's a little notification, I'll swipe over there and the next thing you know, I'm 15 minutes scrolling I'm in a lot of different um, like faith groups and Christian groups and Bible groups and then I'll catch my, something will catch my eye and the next thing I know I have forgotten why I even picked up my phone and I'll close it and I'll set it back down. That's a real thing y'all. <laughs> That's real. Um, and when I get talking about the covetousness, um, I've shared my planner collection. I've shared a video of my Bible collection. I've shared on my, my book collections and um, if I'm honest, I have never really been a collector. I think I would get fixated on a little, a couple little things. You know, I used to love to collect little pigs, but it got to a point where, okay, I'm done with that. Or I would collect coffee mugs. Okay, I'm done with that. And it always seems like um, it was just enough dangling of whatever object had caught my eye that would get me fixated on it and would take my focus off of whatever I was doing. Lately, it's been my deep diving into scripture. And the things that have been taking me away from that is more Bible stuff, believe it or not. More Bible studies, more um, Bible translations, more different Bibles that offer different um, layouts, Diff I'm telling you, planner. Oh, well, I've been using this planner for a year. I'm going to try this planner now. So now I have all these planners, nice planner and planner covers, you know, traveler's notebooks that house the planners. And now they're on a wall collecting dust because I'm not using them. I love them. I look at them. I, I take them down. I'll open them like, maybe I'll use this one. It's always a distraction away from something that I originally was doing. And one good thing that I think is, is being brought to the surface of this is that I'm recognizing it. And 
while I would make excuses about it before, you know, I would say things like, well, you know, it's God's word. You can never have too much of God's word. Or, you know, I'd say something else sarcastic and sassy, like, you know, God, this one is a life counsel Bible. I need this because I, you know, people, a lot of people reach out to me and I need to be able to use maybe these, this commentary note or what, you know what? So this is a good, this is a good purchase for me, for me. And, um, so I just, I fell into that for several months towards the end of last year or end of last year into the beginning of this year. I felt it heavy. I knew it. I'm not going to lie. I would get on there and I would, the whole time I'm looking and reading the, the specs and stuff. I literally think this really happened. The good angel gets up there and the bad angel gets up there. And the good angel is reminding me, God's word is God's word. Whatever translation you're reading it in, whatever hard copy or hardback, leatherback, whatever, God's word does not change. You don't need to keep buying God's word when you have a good solid one that you use every day, Rhonda. And then the other guy sitting over here going, mm, look at that, look at that cover. Look at the notes in that one. Look at the commentary in that one. You don't have that one. You got space, you know what I mean? And it really became that kind of struggle. And so as I'm in my reading plan, cause I started back over, we're in, we just finished Numbers and we're in De Deuteronomy. We are almost through the Torah. <laughs> so we are almost through the, the first five books, the first Moses books, the hardest books of the Bible. We're almost through. But what it's also doing is so much reminders of idolatry and that God is a jealous God. You shall have no other gods before me. And y'all, that includes everything, anything, anything that takes your focus off of God is has the potential to be an idol. And I'm gonna say this, and it might rub the wrong way, but for whatever reason, I was put on my, your pets can become idols in your life. Your job can become an idol in your life. Bibles, books, planners, notebooks, stationery, all these things that come, are I'm just as guilty of. I have that collection in my home now. Um, the idolatry of self, you know, there's just everything that takes your eyes off of God scrolling on your social media, looking for Christian groups. How can I get into this group? Let me join this group. So now that you're in all these groups, but yet you're not in God's word. <sighs> Speaking, I'm preaching to the choir right now, y'all, because this is, this is stuff that I have truly been struggling with. And so as I'm going back through the law books, I'm being reminded of the things, and these are the basic laws. These are just the basic, how God wants his people to operate. And yes, I understand he's speaking to the Israelites. And I do understand that these are, this is a different time than us, but these are principles that we are to take and utilize and learn and apply in our lives. While we don't have to do all these, um, all these animal sacrifices and strict and adhere to these strict rules because of what Jesus did for us, the principle is still the same. You, you should focus on God and everything else falls into place. And he will always provide for your needs. Do I need all these Bibles and planners? No. I have gotten to the point where I have simplified my life so that I don't even need a planner. I do not even need to plan the next day because I have simplified my life. <laughs> Thank God, because I'm in a season now that I can do that, but I used to have to live out of a planner. I mean, I wrote down everything. I just, I, I just let that go. So why am I still 
idolizing these things? Why am I still, not idol, yeah, coveted, coveting them? Why am I still scanning planner groups? How are they decorating their planner? How are they doing this? What are they buying? What markers are they using now? Who cares? I don't even have a plan. I'm not even using a planner. Y'all, it's a waste of time. It's brain numbing. It opens the door for Satan to take a foothold so that he can keep you out of God's word. He can keep you away from your purpose and your calling on your life for what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. And so while I wanted to start this video, really just kind of giving you a background of where I've been and what I've been going through, that's been it. I have been really being redirected. Um, I've been getting little, you know, finger shaking. And I know, I know, and that's the bad thing is I know, and I'm still doing it. I'm still making excuses for some of the behaviors that I'm doing. You know, and I, and it's really hard. I mean, I mean, some of the, look, I keep repeating myself. I apologize. I'm just like, because I, I know that I'm making these excuses. And when I do get in the word and I do read through these things and the questions that I'm saying, well, what about this? There, he answers them for me. Anything that I have a question or a concern or a worry about is right here. It's here. I just have to turn to the right passage. The instruction is there. There's nothing in our life that has not been written about. In some way, shape, or form, the answer is there. It may not look like what we're, we're looking for it to look, but it's there and it's up to us to identify it and apply it. And the application part, I'm telling you, is really hard because you almost don't have to identify it because when you read it, it slaps you in the face and you're like, oh yeah, what about that? And then it's up to you to pick it up and to walk it out. And that's just really hard. And I think, one of the things I'm gonna have to do, I, if you're like this, y'all let me know I'm not, I can't be alone, I know I'm not alone. I, this, is, this is a real thing. I'm gonna have to remove myself from a lot of this social media um, groups. As much as that I get out of them, it really is a waste of time. Can, can we just be honest? It's a waste of time. I can pick up my phone and I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling, and 20 minutes have passed by and I have done absolutely nothing I've not gained anything that's gotten me further in life. I haven't, um, the only thing I have gained is wanting something that I don't have. Oh, I like that. Look at that. I'm gonna try that. Go to website, scroll a little bit more. Next time it's on your, your it'll be prompted to, as you're scrolling, it'll pop up there more often. It's, it's there for, with an agenda. And so this is a struggle that I'm having. And this is something that I'm praying about. Your prayers are welcome. I would love to have an army behind me because this is not easy. Just as if you have a specific request of something that you feel like this may be speaking to you about, put it in the comments or message me. I will put you in my prayer journal and I will make sure to pray over you because I know how hard it is. I know I'm working on it every single day. Um, and Things that I've been trying to study that have been a little bit um, like overwhelming to me are being, are being talked to me right now in Deuteronomy, which is one of the things I wanted to share because um, it was talking about, oh gosh, y'all, this is going to be just an all over the place video. I will try not to make it um, too long, but one of the things that... Um, when I'm reading in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy is talking about, um, I think it's chapter 13 is where I read it today, but I also read it into the commentary. Now, one of the things that I like to study are different religions, what they believe, what they practice, what their reasoning is behind that. And so I've read several books. I've watched so many sermons and documentaries, so to speak, 
commenting. And so in, anyway, I've just been really, really reading it and learning it. And y'all, you know what I'm told? What I'm told is that, um, and I know this is, it's a little out of context, but it's not, if you listen to it. Here, uh, Moses is reminded the second generation, because they're fixing to go into Canaan and take it over. Moses is not going, so this is kind of like his last um, sermon, so to speak, to, to tell the second generation. Because if we remember, the first generation were um, exiled out of Egypt. They grumbled too much. They fell into idolatry. They just, they um, fell off course. And God said, you know what? I'm not even sending y'all in there. I'm going to send your kids. So these are the kids that are now going into the promised land. Some of them are adults. Some of them, I'm sure, are, you know, teenagers and stuff like that, young adults. But anyway, so Moses is reminding them, I know you watched your parents, you know, mess up and do the things. So let's just revisit what God says. This is what's going to happen when you go into Canaan. And so he's telling them again, but he's talking about, you know, prophets and dreamers that come up and he's telling them that, um, you know, you're not to follow them. You are to keep these. This is the commandments that we are, that you're going to be following and don't be tripped up and don't get, um, if you see your brother doing something, you know, you need to go to them and tell them, hey, this is wrong. We're not doing this. If they try to come to you in secret and pull you their way, you say, um, no. And then you literally have to address it. And back then, back then they, you know, they stoned people for, for that kind of stuff. But anyway, while I was reading this, the commentary piped up and said, you know, it's okay to study these things so that you can be aware of the other, um, oh, here, let me just tell you what it said. Um, it goes, how, no, this is my, where's the, I'll tell you, you can read this like a book. It is just so good. But it says, so while I'm studying these things and learning about what they believe and why they believe. I mean, I've gone deep dived in there. It says, however, there are some areas of human knowledge that are dangerous to investigate and God wants his people to be wise in what is good and innocent in what is evil. And then he gives it the verse Romans 16, 9. We don't have to experience sin to learn how deadly it is. Being in Inquisitive and those who investigate the despicable religious practices of the Canaanites back then were in danger of tempting themselves and giving Satan opportunity to move in. While that also rolled over into scrolling and giving, getting these little covetness, get these little eyeballs full of something that sets in your mind, then Satan just steps right on in there and sits on your shoulder and goes, oh, let's go back to that. Let's review that. Oh, let's read more about this. And so then everything in opposition of what God's word says starts being illuminated. So you see what happens? So while you may think that you're walking the walk and talking the talk, if you're studying, if you're investigating, if you're inquiring, scrolling, if you're staring too long at a certain ad or whatever, it, it prompts it. And what this is saying is while there are some areas that it's okay to investigate, you got to be super careful about the ones you choose to focus on because that's going to be illuminated. And I, and I can testify to this. The more I learn about the different religions and their beliefs, the more I start when I'm reading, I'm like, Ooh, let me pull up that website and compare. Ooh, let me, let me pull up this video and read about that or watch about that again. So it's, what is it doing? It's taking me out of God's word and it's getting me over there. Mm. That was an eye opener to me because where I was thinking I'm trying to learn so that I would know how to have conversations. Hello, Rhonda, what's happening here? So, and it says, it gives Satan opportunity to move in. As we mature in the faith and become grounded in the word, we can carefully study the philosophies and ideas that are held by various religious groups. 
but, you know, whatever comes after the but negates what was before the but. <laughs> but only so that we might better share the gospel with them. Missionaries must know the religious mindset of the people to whom God sends them so they can communicate effectively with them. True, we ought to know them, but only as a chemist handles poisons to discover their qualities, not to infect their blood with them. Can you say that God just talks to you when you, when you completely surrender and say, Lord, what is happening here? Why am I so much more aware of their beliefs now and scramble to try to find a passage to back it up. You know what I mean? It's like, it was a, tw it twisted me, not gonna lie. But um, didn't it didn't get a foothold because thank God that I feel I'm pretty sensitive to the temp the, the nudging of the Holy Spirit when he says, hold up, hold up, let's, let's revisit this. Let's circle back around here. And I love it. I love it when that happens because that's something that will be deep seated within me and that the next time I go to maybe, let me just check out what, what that church does about this. It, I'll reel myself back in. I said, you know what, Ron, it doesn't matter. What, does, what do we believe? What, do, what am I teaching you in my word about this particular thing? Isn't that just amazing? I'm telling you, when, when you completely surrender, be ready, <laughs> that's all I can say, and willing, because there's some days I'm not willing. There's some days that I back talk God, I know, and I, and I apologize, and I have to repent against it. But some days I'm just too tired to um, take that extra step or go that extra mile. But then I'll tell myself, well, you know what, Rhonda? Why are you so tired to not do that extra reading or pull out that extra book off your shelf and kind of... and kind of back up what the word is saying, but yet you're gonna go outside here in a little bit and you're gonna do another workout because you've got to chalk, mark it off your tracker. Why is that, Rhonda? You know what I mean? <laughs> and so when, when you do ask to be changed and transformed, you have to be willing to do the work. It's not a one and done. It's not a God, I, I surrender and I want to you to use me. It's at every day, every minute of every day because you never know. He might. You might have a busier day and then you'll have a quiet day. And he may come at you at your busiest day and say, hey, let's try that what you said you wanted me to use you. You know what I mean? So that's kind of where I've been, you guys. It's just, I've, I really have been all over the place, but yet not far. He's just kind of like regrouped me. He, he has bought, bought, brought, he has put sermons um, within my grasp to watch. He has blessed me with time to watch them and listen to them, to really soak it in. So I'm not, I'm not watching them while doing something else is kind of what I'm saying. Um, you know, I'm not just listening as I'm doing dishes or, fold, excuse me, folding laundry. I mean, I'm literally sitting there watching their lips move, watching their body language and taking in what they're saying. The pastors that I listen to, to me, are rock solid. And um, I have just a handful. I listen to Jack Hib Pastor Jack Hibbs, um, Pastor Gary Hamrick. Um, oh, Mike Winger, he helps me so much with questions that you would never think to ask out loud. But yet while you're reading and the question comes up, if you listen to his channel, somebody else has thought of the same question and it's like, oh wow. And, and it just so happens it's on the episode that you happen to be listening to. And then it just, it almost is a calming or a closure in one area and opens up another door in another one because now I've understood this, I can go on to the next one. So Mike Winger is a good one. Amir Safarte, I like to listen to him. And just as of recently, Y'all, Jackie Hill Perry has been speaking to a crevice within me about how real she is. Um, and I've just listened to the past one that I've, I've actually listened to it twice now and it's called, um, 
I think it's something, the woman at the well or the, anyway, I will link that one because I think that's worth watching. I've watched it twice now. Some of the concepts that she pulls out has you really questioning yourself of what's your motive here? And what is your motive in teaching this? How are we going to stop focusing on the little things, the little details, and circle back around to what the whole book is about, and that's Jesus. We're sometimes getting so fixated on the details of, like she was talking about the, the woman at the well, or Hagar, or just, you know, everyone fixates, fixates on what that woman was and what she represented and forgets the whole, the whole part of, God, I already knew all that. Why are we so fixated on that? Why aren't we fixated on what God already knew and yet what he's still done? So... I don't know, she just has really, he, she's found a crevice in me and she's really been um, chiseling away at that. So Jackie Hill Perry is another one that I've been listening to. And to be honest, some of the ones that I would go to wholeheartedly without even a second chance, I've been drawing away from just because of some of the ways that I've, I think the sermons have changed. Some of the the way that I'm hearing their words have changed. And so that was kind of a weird thing. So, so I don't know, it could be me, it could be where, I, where the Lord's leading me, or it could be something the Lord's shifting in their lives. But for whatever reason, our ships are passing <laughs> and there's other ships coming across. So right now that those pastors are really talking to me, I'll list, list those down. You can't go wrong with any sermon that you pick from Pastor Jack or Pastor Gary, and even his sons are, um, in the church now they they're doing a good series on jehovah the names of god right now which is really interesting because you know god is not just one that he has so many names and each name represents like certain so anyway i know i'm going off on a tangent but y'all the lord has been working in my life he has been moving i think he's slowed me down some because i was just feeling so uninspired so i really think that that was just a time and a moment of him telling me to just sit still and just to rest right now and regather my thoughts, regather, you know, the whole where I am and kind of get my feet regrounded because I was, I think I was just doing so much that I was getting to like this straddle position. And, and, you know, when you get a little too far out in the straddle, you start teetering. You're like, what is happening? And then you just lose your balance. And I think he's calling me to just really get my feet back underneath me, focus on what I'm supposed to be focusing on, and he'll tell me when it's time to share another video. <laughs> so I hope this, um, you know, wasn't too jumbly or all over the place. I mean, I had, I thought I had <laughs> a game plan coming on here, and I was excited to have the time to just be quiet and be alone and get a video out and um just didn't go the way i thought it was gonna go it just went this way instead so i hope that it, you know for the one or two people that this video was for i hope that it was encouraging to you i hope that it inspires you to know that we all go through seasons of change and um you may have a plan and you may think you're working your plan but sometimes you get so far ahead of yourself that you realize, wow, I left my plan way back there. <laughs> what am I doing way over here? And you don't even realize it. So you just have to repent it, you know, seek forgiveness and have God redirect you and, and then be willing to sit down and just, okay, where was we going? <laughs> because it's never you alone. Wherever you are, God is right there with you. You're never walking alone. And you're ne and oh, I, I posted a meme, or maybe I did, maybe I saved it the other day, but it was talking about you never, oh gosh, I should have never said it because now I can't remember it. And I'm on my phone, so I can't <laughs> pull it up real quick. But it was something like, you know, walking with God isn't, you know, you trying to keep up with him. He's always walking with you. You know what I mean? So there's like this little relationship that you have that you're never alone and he's never too far ahead and he never falls behind. He's always walking right there with you. So it was, it was a cute little meme. I'll have to see if I can find it. But anyway, I appreciate guys. I appreciate your time watching the video and I'm going to get my
my my stuff together and we'll do another study or a, a flash in or a jump in or a nugget share a quiet time moment when when it's time okay guys i'll see you in the next video i hope you guys have a great rest of your day bye